it is your buddy peace and harmony with you here today and we're zooming in and focusing in a little bit more in depth on some of the self-limiting blocks the mood states the emotion states the thought states that repeated over time become a mood and then mood over time becomes sort of an identity and then that identity becomes very solid and it becomes very unfulfilling state of being. And that can be based on the buying into the illusion or the defense mechanisms that are set up in place when you're in a relationship with a covert narcissist or a psychopathic individual. When we're talking once again about someone who is of this type of personality, they have an insatiable need to dominate and control someone emotionally and not in a positive uplifting supportive nurturing way but more to the contrary the flip side um the uh, minimizing of your experience um not validating you or giving credit where credit is due not assigning importance where importance is deemed uh right the the priority at hand in other words um you are sick, you've just come down with a life-threatening illness or a life-changing illness, and, and they say, well, most people have a vital life uh, with that. They're just someone who is minimizing your experience, not there to understand where you're at. Um, they don't, they're not really there. Um, they don't wanna hear about it. They, they don't wanna feel about it. They don't wanna know about it. They want you to just suck it up, deal with it, and just pretend as if you don't exist or that is not important, that is not valuable. Yet, on the contrary, if something were to happen of the same with them, they would expect you to be all support, all ears, all eyes, etc. And so when we talk about really the defense mechanisms or the sort of adaption or coping that is encouraged in this sort of relationships, it becomes more of a trauma bond uh, versus a healthy bond of relationship. In other words, one based on control, um, where debts have to be repaid. It's not enough to have a, a give and take. You know, it's as if someone is always making tallies. Someone is always making strikes. Someone's always making up and down. Someone is always competing. Someone is always trying to put you on, uh, basically living on trial, having to prove yourself. Um, and this can become a very stressful way of living in a relationship with a covert narcissist or a psychopath. Um, it is because um, these individuals, and I do put the two together um, when we talk about these states because um, oftentimes it becomes so severe as, you know, the main, uh, of, you know, very distinguishing feature is that the psychopath is completely more severe and intensive on the spectrum to the point where they have zero empathy. I mean, it's not just an empathy deficit. They have very much um, a darker and sinister need to control and overpower others in really for the, the taking of themselves. Um, and um, they will really go to, um, at all ends, in violating laws and social norms. So even more so, um, you know, we, we talk about, you know, taking of documents or, um, you know, creating of, of uh, you know, um, false identities or, you know, things of that nature where, um, you know, they're shelling money over shore or et cetera, just thinking that they're above the law, um, you know, getting a driver's license, uh, credit cards, different social security numbers, um, pretending to be a such and such, uh, you know, um, you know, that they're not married and that they are married. Um, they don't have kids and you find out that they do have kids. You know, these are the people who live the double and triple lives. So it becomes very severe. And so, but the effect is the same in terms of not valuating, validating your life energy, which is your emotional etheric energy and your feelings, your needs, your wishes, your desires, things of that nature. Um, and then keeping one sort of stuck or stifled in those self-limiting beliefs. And then we talk about really furthermore what... Um, what those defense mechanisms oftentimes look like can look like depression or even grandiosity. In other words, you know, not wanting to admit the truth. Um, it's going to be okay. We can continue to live this way. Um, you know, um, he is wonderful. She is wonderful. Um, they did not hurt me. Everyone cheats or making, you know, excuses up um, and sort of living in that sort of illusory state and keeping the lie going. Um, and so that can be a very painful uh, way to live because they feel that, that re reality, 
the admittance of the truth or, you know, coming to terms or having the ability to do that would be too painful. Or for some people who have been in that, that state for too long, feel that it's, it's not possible. Um, they have completely resigned their life. Um, you know, how many dreams have you let gone? Um, how many events have you not attended? How many people have you not said hi to? How many doctor visits have you not followed up with? How many career choices have you made, you know, to the contrary of your benefit versus to the detriment because of negative self-limiting beliefs, which didn't allow you to flourish and begin to make positive orderly direction sort of thinking choices and behaviors and then feelings, allowing yourself to think and live in that solution versus being under the the defense mechanism of the depression or grandiosity that can be set in place when in a covert narcissistic or psychopathic relationship, which is really sort of tinged with a, a trauma bond. Um, so the, the solution then is to see that neither is correct. So being completely depressed is the denial of your inner voice, such hence deep rest. So if you're not allowing your voice to say, I am, I want, I think, I feel, I'm doing, I will, and then having that commitment, that experience, then you are still living under that self-limiting belief. Your The lid is too low. You're living in that strangleholded position where someone had you know reflected erroneously back to you, you'll never make it, you're not enough, you'll never have the money, you'll never have the, you know, you'll never have the this, you'll never have the that, you grew up on the wrong side of the tracks, you know, people from this side of the community don't do that, or et cetera, whatever the excuses that are holding you back need to be smoked out, basically, you know, dissolved out from your self-limiting beliefs. So realize and begin to identify what some of those are that are keeping either the severe depression or grandiosity in place. So it's feeling maybe unreal or not possible. Um, you know, um, I think it's very, uh, it's a, a horrible thing when um, viewers tell me, you know, they're really painted into a corner. They're they're not feeling like their life is where it should be. Um, maybe their, their family has sabotaged them. Um, or a number of other people have kind of scapegoated them. Scapegoating is a huge, huge problem with covert narcissistic or psychopathic relationships where all of a sudden it is your fault. Everything is your fault. Um, you know, you are always getting the brunt, you know, you're getting the bad stuff. You're getting the bad looks, the bad rap. Um, things are unfair. You're being shut out. Um, you're not being considered. Your viewpoint isn't valid. You don't hold any water. You don't hold any weight. <laughs> Whatever it is that they're negatively reinforcing, they're erroneously mirroring back to you um, the wrong quality. So you're not seeing your life realistically. So the number one thing is to look at these extremes, the depression and then the grandiosity, the making of excuses either way, and smoking those out, dissolving and saying, okay, it's time for me to look at this realistically and ask those tough questions. Um, if I wasn't living under self, you know, such uh, self-limiting fear, I would really love to. I, I would really dream of. I've always wanted to. Um, I've always had a fascination with. I always thought it was neat when. I always admired this. I really look up to this. And, you know, these are the sort of feelings and experiences that oftentimes have just been a flicker or, you know, what you had felt was just a figment of your imagination and never pursued or followed up. You know, the chance that you'd get to travel or make friends or um, have a certain type of job or a certain sort of lifestyle um, that, you know, you've only dreamed of, so to speak. And, you know, um, and then the, you know, relationship with this individual, you know, has somehow then taken the place. Um you know, it's kind of like a detour, if you will. Um, and so that's why I very much uh, want to look at the template or the blueprint with which is keeping that self-limiting belief and feeling in place. So it's twofold. It's a feeling and it's a thought pattern. <clears throat> and if you're allowing that thought pattern um, and that feeling state to keep you down and stuck and not going after it, whatever it might be for you, it can be a way to live your life, um, a way to... Um, uh, you know, uh, feel close with others to uh, nurture and uh, nourish yourself, um, a way to follow up on your, your talents. You know, <clears throat> maybe you've always wanted to build something or paint something or sculpt something or fish or <clears throat> build something or write something or create something. <clears throat> and you, <clears throat> excuse me, 
you would live by the uh, self-limiting tenants that you could not, um, you know, that it was not possible for you. And that this person was just kind of like a, it's like a, a roadblock. In other words, you could only go so far. Excuse me, um, I'm getting over a cold here. So the defense mechanisms are oftentimes seen in those, um, in those extremes. So the depression, I don't have any energy. Um, you know, I'm, you know, it's a, it's a learned state. I mean, learned mean you had absorbed this and you were told this and you had absorbed into your body, into your emotional body, into your heart and into your mind, these negative erroneous reflections back onto you, which have nothing to do with reality. Yet you felt, um, not powerful enough or not right enough or, um, not validated to accept the contrary. In other words, maybe I am not that bad. Maybe I am okay. Uh, maybe I do have some valuable thoughts. Maybe I do have some valuable things that I cook. Maybe I do have some valuable things that I paint, that I sculpt, that I make, that I garden, that I sing, that I write, or whatever it is that you have special about you, but that was not acknowledged in the fans of your own self were not flamed, were not um, fanned because Oftentimes, because the covert narcissist or psychopath is threatened by, by doing engaging in that supportive type of behavior, um, it becomes very much off the cuff. And unless they can be the one who is coming out to be the best, you know, you don't challenge them. Um, so, you know, looking at then the grandiosity. In other words, oh, you know, it'll, um, it's okay, you know. Um, you know, um, it's, it's just going to do this and it's going to do that. And then you, you know, you find yourself getting into trouble and, you know, over committing to, um, an individual who is maybe not there for you psychologically, um, financially, emotionally, whatever it is, that's part of your, uh, relationship and you need to survive and thrive. It's, it's just not there. Um, in other words, there's really kind of a bottoming out about to emerge. So, um, it is coming to a realistic assessment and realizing that reality holds the key that's where dreams, you know, dreams are made of reality. In other words, it is the I am, it is the self-belief, those pillars, which you then raise up, you know, rather than it being a two inch pillar, raise it up to 10 stories. Get your self-belief stronger, being independent, getting an accurate reflection back of yourself, your strengths, your talents, your abilities, and negating and being able to say, no, enough is enough. I'm not taking that that ne those negative, insultatory, derogatory behaviors or comments reflected back to me that are keeping me in the extremes of life, either um, depressed or feeling like you're still buying into the illusion and you're, something is not right, you are not happy. When you are able to let go of those, you'll realize that the middle ground is where the dreams and the happiness is made of, and then happiness will be more of a chronic state versus a sort of temporary or once in a while state. It is your buddy, Peace and Harmony with you here today, and I hope that these videos do help. Please share, please subscribe for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support.